Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we are actually going to be looking on resource remapping and I'm going to try to make this video as fast as possible so I don't cut as, you know, just waste as much of your time as possible. So for example, let's just talk a little bit of examples here why we would need resource remap remapping. For example, you damaged pad 1 and then motor 1, you set it on motor 5. You can map uh, the 5 here to be motor 1 and just put it right there so it's very simple or for some reason you want motor one to go to the led pin you could also do that you could check the resource list and i'll show you how to do that right now um so it's pretty straightforward so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually flip motor one and motor four and double check that they're working and we were going to be taking a look at beta flight as well as debugging it with our mini oscilloscope here uh this is going to be the first part of the series of debugging the fpv drone fpv components um series here on the channel uh, later on we're going to be testing and show you how to test esc's motors and um seeing if they're bad or they're good and even possibly fpv cameras and other components as well but first we're going to take a look at resource remapping double check that we've got everything correctly and um yeah well let's get started all right guys so before we begin let me just show you how to connect up this oscilloscope here so if you're going to be doing these kinds of testing with me uh, with the oscilloscope so as you can see here, I have signal 1, which is the orange wire. That would go to this probe right here. Uh, this will be checking our signal. And when you get signal, you'd also obviously need ground. However, you know, the color coding here is completely wrong for me. My ground is red, and this is where the ground uh, probe part would connect to. So that's all said and done here. And we just connect this part right there uh, to port A. And then we just go ahead and turn this guy on. So, yeah. Um, there we go. Alright, so you're going to get this kind of screen, and this screen is going to be a bit kind of confusing, possibly. Hold on, let me just zoom in here. What you're going to want to do is we're going to have to scroll. Or first, just change this to 2 volts per division because we are on channel A, which is the blue. And let's get in a better shot here. Right now we have it set on multi-shot. So you want to go make sure channel B is off. So we click on it with the M button. And it's very difficult for me to do it like this because okay, we don't need math right now. Okay. And then make sure it is, see, enabled off. So we can get the most memory for channel A. And now we want to scroll down and are going to minimize this okay this seems pretty good but now it's not making sense but that's totally fine so you do we're gonna go to the trigger here and now we change it to blue because blue is our channel one and um, single what you want to do is keep it on auto mode okay and trigger is rising this is a rising edge we want to catch the rising part channel source is channel a is what we're on Threshold, this is very important here because uh, you see this line right there that's moving up and down. If we go over this, it'll stop triggering correctly um, because, you know, we're not we're not finding anything to pass over this voltage right, right there. So we want to go down until we get it nice and stable. Somewhere around wherever you get it stable is pretty good. So that's multi-shot right there. And everything else, just leave it, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter right now because it's just a pretty basic trigger. And now we have, now we're looking actually at multi-shot here. So if I were to go into the motors tab, and let me just bring that up on the screen now. All right, so as you can see here, um, we're gonna enable the motors pad and we are listening on motor one. So if right now, if I go to move motor two, we shouldn't see anything, and which is correct. Now, if I were to go to motor one, you see, we're changing the values there. So that's cool. Now let's go to motor four. Nothing should happen and nothing does happen as you can see right there. So that's perfect. Now what we want to do is we want to change the resource mapping of motor four to motor one pad, which is what we're listening on now. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first thing we want to do is we're going to go into the CLI part right there. Let me make sure we have that motors pad. Yes, it's disabled. All right. And you're going to want to do resource list. All right. And we're going to go up here and we're going to find our motors. As you can see, there's motor one and two, which is A06 is motor one, A07 is motor two, 
A11 is motor 3 and A12 is motor 4. So what we want to do is we want to route motor 4 should be A06 and motor 1 should be A12 because we're just flipping those two right there. All right, so how do we go about doing that? Well, pretty simple. All we got to do now is just a couple commands. So let's just do it together here. So let's start with motor 1. Uh, motor 1 should be, where is it? Okay, so it's A06 right now. We need it to be A12. So what we want to do is say resource motor 1 A12 A12 and then enter. Okay, so now motor 4 is disabled. Perfect. And now we're going to say resource motor 4 is A06. Okay, and that's set, should be correct. So now we save it. Okay, it saves and reboots. And now let's go. Now in theory, we should go to the motors tab here and be able to see a change now. So let's just do motor four. And that is perfect. And we're listening on signal one, but motor four is the one that's getting affected. And it's that simple. Um, that's really it. That's all you really got to do. So if you want, if you're afraid, let's actually go ahead and check motor four now. So let's just scoot back here. All right. And motor four for me was the black wire here. All right. This is it. Okay. So now we're listening on motor four here. And uh, if I move motor four, nothing happens. But if I move motor one, everything happens so that's perfect we just that's all it is that we just remapped our motors it's very simple there's nothing really to it just a couple commands and um it takes less than like 30 seconds so yeah well that's it guys i really hope it helped you guys out there and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and if you're looking into getting into this hobby very deeply and dedicated and planning on a bunch of more bills and saving cash i do highly recommend you pick up an oscilloscope this tiny oscilloscope it's doing absolutely beautiful um and the esc testing and motor testing and all that i'll have that coming up on the series later on so we can actually see if the component actually needs replacement or even just a small component on the let's just say esc needs replacement and we can go ahead and do that and well that's it guys so i really hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and I will see you next time. See you guys. Take